thank you so much for being here today. And um, I want to say a couple of thank yous. Thank you to our children's staff, our, our nursery staff. Um, thank you for investing in these children. Thank you to our church, who doesn't mind being here on a Sunday and investing in children to see them worship and, and hear them worship and pray for them. Uh, as I told you, we don't have a babysitting um, place here at Restoration Chapel. What we do is we're trying to raise up leaders for the next generation. When I grad, when I uh, graduate, um, <laughs> when I retire, when I'm 125 years old, somebody else is glad to be a pastor. So hopefully, one of these will be ready by then. But uh, seriously, I want to thank you so much, parents. Thank you for allowing us to spend a couple of hours with your kids a week uh, on Sunday morning, on Wednesday night. Thank you so much for that. And this morning, I, I don't want you to think this lesson is just for children. This lesson's for all of us together. And over the last couple of weeks, we, we said this was a summer of teaching. And we talked about, in our first, uh, first couple of weeks, we talked about reaching two because we believe... And you're not only just reaching one, you're reaching two. We believe in multiplication, not addition. We believe in going out and letting people know the gospel. We believe in telling these children that Jesus loves them and died for them. Amen. We believe that. Then we, we begin to talk about serving. And isn't it amazing that when you walked in, there were children, I think, from the ages of 10 and under that were serving you by shaking your hand when you came in? We had ushers up here. Yeah, it's amazing that they're learning how to serve now. I'll never forget the first time I was an usher and they asked me to pray and I told them no. <laughs> we had had that today. We had people step up and pray and serve and do what they can do. And then we started this series called Elephant in the Room. And I'm so amazed because somebody actually brought me an elephant today, uh, which I just agree. Uh, but... Uh, but we're not going to get into that uh, this morning. We're actually going to take a break from that just today. And we're going to talk about your heart. Your heart. If you have the Bible, turn to Psalms 51. If you don't, that's okay. I'm going to read it out. But if you have your Bible, turn to Psalms 51. And I'm going to be reading the NIV version this morning. It says this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and, and mine is always before me against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desire faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with high eyebrows and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you, o you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, for I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will despise. This morning, I love this scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Because see, you've got David. Everybody knows David. David did a cool thing. David went and he took out Goliath. He stood up to the giant. He stood up and everybody else ran. Do you realize that David was only a teenager when he did it? That means there was a lot of adults that ran. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why we invest into the next generation because sometimes we need somebody to step up. Amen. And if we don't invest in that next generation, then who's going to step up? Who's going to be the next person to take their place? Who's going to be the next person that breaks the chains, the shackles that they're talking about? Who's going to be the next person that's going to shout it to the heavens that my God's not dead? Who's the next person that even though we might not... Listen, I love adults because all adults think they can sing until they're around people. <laughs> amen. And then we get quiet. You know what I'm talking about, Amen. You sing loud in the shower. You sing loud when you're in your car by 
shout it out no matter what. My God is not dead. Even when the part says, shh, they were still loud. Because they understand how important it is. You see, David stood up, but David made mistakes. David made mistakes. David did things that he wasn't supposed to do. David still, even though he was a man after God's own heart, he still made mistakes. You see, I want to let you know, young, young kids, I want to let you hear this. We all make mistakes. But God still loves you. Amen. Adults, because I, I think we need to hear this too. We all make mistakes. But God still loves us. Amen. Amen. There's times that we might say something. There's times that we might do something. There's times that we might think something. There's times that we disobey. There's times that we don't praise. There's times that we don't read our words. But you know what? God still loves us. And you know how I know that? Because John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He did that to the ones that put him on the cross so he can take your mistake and change it into a blessing. We got to believe that this morning. We got to believe it. As I was studying this, there's three things that came. And the first thing is this we all sin. We all sin. Now, I know as kids, we think we're the only one to get in trouble, right? Amen. As kids, because I'm, I'm still a kid at heart and I get in trouble a lot. My wife tells me all the time, you better clean up your room, amen. <laughs> We all get in trouble. We all make mistakes. We all have those. And David, even though, as I said earlier, he, he made this mistake, he, he realized that even though he was a man after God's heart, he still had some sin that came up. You see, if there's one thing that all people do is sin, and we don't just sin every once in a while, we sin a lot. If we pay attention, we are constantly reminded of our sins, things we have thought of or done that, that people say are bad. People in the Bible sin too. Even though they're good people, they still sin. And Psalms 51, verses 1 through 3, shows us that David sinned, but he didn't let it affect his relationship. You see, sometimes when we mess up, we, we can't run from it. We can't run from it. Church, if you ever did something, amen, and you try to run from it or hide from it, I think a lot of times we put a mask on our face. You ever notice that? Halloween time, I, I know some of you don't like it, and I understand all the bad things, but I, I love dressing up. I, we dress up at our house. I wear a mask at our house, and I wear capes at our house. Um, we, we got the whole superhero routine. Um, me and Elijah will put on these capes, and we'll run around the house, and we're like Superman and Robin and Batman and all these things. I love dressing up, because when you dress up, you know what happens? You put a mask on your face, and you believe you can do other things. But you, I want you to hear this, I want, especially you kids, I want you to hear this. Just because what you look on the outside, God looks at your heart. And what's on the inside. Adults, God looks at your heart. Amen. You can act like a good person all day long. You can carry a Bible around. You can dress nice. You can, you can, you can act like you're praising and worshiping. You can act like you're doing this and act like you're doing that. But if your heart ain't right, then guess what? There's going to come a day that God says, I never knew you. Amen. You've got to change your heart. Young people, you've got to change your, change your heart. Listen, you can wear that Christian t-shirt. You can, I, man, I love it. When I was a youth pastor... We have some rough kids coming up through here. And, and somebody told me, hey, I know a teacher came to me one day and said, I know you're a youth minister. And I said, really? My kids must be bearing the good fruit. Bearing that good fruit. They're praising. They're, they're doing it. They said, no, because my whole detention class was filled with your young people. I said, do what? They said, no, I had about six of your youth in my detention class, and they were talking about how great their youth minister was. And I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> you see, we can put on a mask all day long. But if we don't change our heart, we don't change our heart, which leads us to the second thing. Because, yes, we all sin. But the second thing is this. Even though we all sin, we've got to clean our heart. Psalms 51, 10 through 12 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain him. Listen, church, David asked God to give a clean heart. A clean heart. 
clean heart. Church, we need to start asking Jesus to clean our heart. We need to ask him to clean what's inside our heart. Adults, we need to ask Jesus to clean our heart. I know that's it. I know, y'all, okay, I'm sorry. I know it's children. We need to ask for salvation. There you go. Amen. We, see, some of us want to make it hard. We, we want to ask for regenerate all this stuff. No, we just need to ask God to come in our heart and clean it. Amen. I'm just going to make it simple and easy. To clean up our heart. Change who, who we are. You see, church, David knew that he had made a mistake. He knew that he had messed up, but he also knew that the only way that it could be fixed is that he had God to come in and clean his heart up, change who he was. Listen, children, you can say you're sorry all day long, but you have to change who you are. Adults, you can say you're sorry all day long, but you got to change who you are. You can't go around. I I know, man, I remember when I was little, and you wanted to play, and the only way you could get out of timeouts when you said you were sorry, and you know you didn't mean it. <laughs> Sister Betty Jo, I stayed with her all the time. You couldn't just say you were sorry. You had to hug. <laughs> and I just wanted to say I was sorry. No, you actually had to hug. And you know, man, I was 13 years old having to hug somebody and tell them I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I cheated in a football game. So I had to go up to him and I'd go, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I just wanted to get out of trouble. But church, it ain't like that with God. You've got to change who you are. You can't go back to the way that you used to do things anymore. That's what true salvation is. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes again. Yeah, you'll make mistakes, but I always like this definition of the imperfect. Do what you know and continue to grow. So if you know it's wrong to steal, guess what? Don't steal. <laughs> Amen. That's simple. If you know it's wrong to gossip, then don't gossip. Amen. If you know it's wrong to lie, then don't lie. Amen. If you know it's wrong to harm your body, then don't harm your body. Amen. Do what you know and you continue to grow. Church is what salvation is all about. But I love it because you don't only just clean up the heart. You know what you got to do? After you clean up the heart, you got to start praising the person that cleaned it. Yes. Amen. Have you ever cleaned your room and then your mom and dad were so excited about it? Yes. Oh, man, they're so excited about it. And they only had to ask you one time. Sometimes they didn't have to ask you at all. Last night, man, it was so excited. Elijah, he went and cleaned up his room without anybody asking him. He just went and cleaned. I don't know what he wanted. I think he just wanted a piece of birthday cake. I think that's what it was. But he went and cleaned it up, and I was so excited about it. I went in, and you know what? I clapped because we do dances and claps in our house. I don't know what you do in your house. But don't judge me. But we dance and clap and do all this other stuff. We were so excited. Tanner got to clapping and dancing. We were so excited about it. But you know what? God wants you to praise him for changing you. You. Amen. When's the last time you told somebody what Jesus did in your heart? And I don't mean just say, oh, I'm just saying. Tell them, amen. I once was in this, but God took me out of that and changed my heart. I once lied, but I asked for forgiveness, and now I don't lie anymore because God loved me so much, he cleaned up my heart. I once stole, but God changed me, and he changed my Listen, church, God, we got to start praising God for what he does. Adults, we can't expect our kids to praise God if we never praise them. I know it's children's day. I'm supposed to be talking to them. But you know what, adults? If we can't praise God, then we can't expect them to do it. We got to start praising God. And I don't mean just in church. You know, when you have a flat tire, do you still praise Him for at least having that tire? Amen. When, when your car breaks down, you still praise Him because you know you're going to get it fixed sometime. It might be four weeks from now, but you're going to get it fixed sometime. They need to hear you praise God. Is it bad that sometimes the only time they hear God come out of our mouth when we stump our toe? Well, they need to hear us praise Him. David asked for forgiveness and he said, open my lips and let me praise you. Let me praise you. Y'all, man, y'all son, God's not dead. Do you realize that's more than a song? So you can be excited about it. I loved it when y'all sung because it's the first time I've seen it in a long time. When y'all sung, y'all actually smiled. Yeah. <laughs> y'all actually, it was amazing. I don't know if you were just smiling at your mom and daddy because they told you you didn't smile that when you get home you can get your, but you smile. <laughs> you know what? If we all had that excitement inside of us, could you imagine what God would pour out upon us? If we would just praise him. Now listen, I'm a very 
very visual learner. Tristan, come on, buddy. I'm a very visual learner, and I have, and I asked Tristan to come up and help me. Johnny snuck out of me. No, I'm just kidding, Johnny. I'm just there. <laughs> just does it connect? I'm a very visual learner, so I, I come to realize this. When we need to ask God is who I'll part. And I love what the Bible says. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is like water. It comes and it's living water and it flows through you and it changes who you are. So when Jesus comes into our heart and we ask for forgiveness, you're making a mess, Tristan. <laughs> Water comes in our heart. But I said this because David had already asked God to his heart. He was doing the will of God. But guess what happens? Sometimes stuff comes up. Amen. Sometimes it comes up. Sometimes we get angry. Right there, you see it's starting to clean up a little bit, amen. I don't know about that mustard coming out, but it looks 
good. Uh, and you start cleaning and cleaning and cleaning, and you allow God just to continue to move and continue to move in your life. You begin to praise Him. You begin to worship Him. You begin to let God just touch your life and touch your heart. He'll just continue to flow through there. Yeah, there might be some stuff that's still there, but you ask the Holy Spirit to come back. Amen. And you come and allow Him to move in your heart again. Amen. Amen. You let it flow, and you let it flow, and you let it flow, and you let it flow. It's supposed to come out, Tristan. And you let it flow. <laughs> so you just let it go, right? And you let the Holy Spirit just keep coming, and keep moving, and keep touching, and keep blessing, and keep blessing. And you can see, even though that mustard's being a pain, it keeps flowing out. It keeps flowing out. It keeps flowing out. It keeps flowing out. And yeah, look, there's still something there, right? There's still something there. So you know what you do? You go back to God. Amen. And we're praying. Amen. <laughs> Get dirty again for the Holy Spirit. 